morning, Toastmasters. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> is it just me and my friends, or is it everybody that whenever you go to Mexico, there's some kind of weird vibe in the universe that makes you do at least one thing that you leave thinking, what was I thinking? I used to think it was the tequila, and then I realized it didn't matter what we drank, it happened every time. <laughs> the last time we went to Puerto Vallarta, it was no different. I got a little late start, so I showed up uh, three hours later and several drinks behind my friends. And so when I arrived, I stepped off the plane, and I see three of my friends standing there, and these huge sombreros singing this bastardized version of a huge, beautiful Mexican song. One ton tomato, I ate one ton tomato. <laughs> my first instinct was to turn around and act like I didn't know them. <laughs> since they so generously purchased a hat for me, I decided that I had to put it on and chime right in. <laughs> so we walked right back over to the bar that we come from called Paco Paco. Now, I think that bar was named after this crazy parrot that I befriended when I came into Paco Paco. And every time I would stop and start to take my shot at the pool, it would scream at me. Ah! <laughs> 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 totally mess up. <laughs> After five gin marys later, we decided we would head toward the beach. <coughs> and so, um, since we were clearly overserved, we thought it might be wise to walk. And so, as we're heading to the beach, you know that anytime you're with a group of one or two or more women, you know that you have to stop and shop on every block from here to your destination. So that's what we did. Uh, Carolyn Isla, her friend, slipped into one of the one of the shops, uh, leaving Val and I, the most overserved, unattended. And that's when Val and I are walking down the street, and she looks at me and says, "I need a haircut." Too. <laughs> And she said, I'll buy. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> so we stepped into the barbershop, and 15 minutes later, we emerged with our new beautiful Mexican here. <laughs> Did I mention Ilo was a, a salon, uh, <laughs> an owner of the salon in LA, upscale salon? So we looked down the street as we emerged, and I seen him. I'm like, Isla, Carol, look, we got haircuts. And Val says, yeah, and it was only $5, including the tip. <laughs> Carol looks at us and says, you overpaid. <laughs> and, then, and then Isla looks at us and says, what were you thinking? <laughs> and upon reflection, Val and I look at a, one of the shop mirrors and then look back at each other and go, what were we thinking? <laughs> so we put our hats back on and we headed to the beach. And when we arrived at the beach, we noticed there was something unusual about the beach. It looked a little different. And then finally, upon a closer inspection, we decided there were no women on the beach. And we looked a little closer and we thought, well, well, maybe this is a gay beach, which was totally confirmed by the huge, bright orange umbrella with the two men under it in this immaculate picnic basket. <laughs> we immediately made friends with David and Stan. And they even had their own personal waiter. So, after about 10 minutes of drinking and sunning, I decided I wanted to try to parasail. So I went over, I brought my money down, I strapped myself in and got my instructions from the guy. And the instructions were very simple. Number one, don't pull the front cords unless you want to die. And the back one was, pull only the back cord and only when he's blowing the whistle. So here I was, flying through the air after about two steps. Um, I was floating all above the ocean, totally blissed out in this relaxed state, almost in a deep meditation or inebriation. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how when you're in a deep sleep or a deep meditation and you hear when it's time to come out, you hear this small voice calling your name. Lisa, Lisa. I hear this this small nagging sound, and then finally it dawns on me, that's the whistle, I'm supposed to be blowing the whistle. So, uh, or pulling the cord when I hear the whistle. So I hear the whistle, and I start pulling and pulling, and then I think to myself, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy who does this for a living. <laughs> talking about, because I'm gonna land on top of that condo if I keep pulling. So I decided, I'm just gonna guide myself in. So I start pulling on the right, which I wasn't close to. On the left, and I'm guiding, and all of a sudden I say this giant orange umbrella. <laughs> I'm gonna land on that, so I tuck my 
feet as high as I can, and my butt slides off the edge of the umbrella, and I land right next to the waiter and our new friends. And David looks over and goes, excuse me, we didn't order this. And of course, they're all laughing, except for the guy who uh, strapped me into the suit. He comes over and he's speaking Spanish, and he's unclipping me and yelling the whole time. And I look at David and I say, I don't speak Spanish. Do you know what he said? And he said, yes. He said, what were you thinking? <laughs>